Welcome to another Friday Functions video. In this Friday Functions video, I want to help you scale your SharePoint apps. I've been actually talking to a whole lot of people who are building apps on SharePoint. And one thing I've noticed is that many are doing very one-off scenarios. And what I mean by that is that they're building their apps against lists, but then they're not thinking about scale. Um, and this is something that's not intentional. I'm not criticizing. I just want to help you kind of add this to your tool belt. When you're creating apps for SharePoint, think bigger than the list. Um, and so what I'm going to show you today is how to take one set of column choices and apply it to multiple tenant apps. So think about when you're using columns that have choices, um, and no matter what those choices types are, um, you, you very often will use that same choice list many times, right? And so you don't want to actually go to the list and click the plus sign and create these type of columns every time you make an app. And here's some examples that I put up here at the top um, for you to take a peek at. Let's see if I can point this out. So right up here, regions, right? Everybody uses regions. I mean, I mean, most companies have a preset um, list of regions that they use all the time. So you definitely wouldn't want to create that column over and over and over and over again in your SharePoint list. Project names. Sometimes they have to go through an approval process or something. Um, maybe they're being triaged for, um, you know, like if you're using PWA or something to evaluate your projects before you start working on them to make sure that they align with your business drivers. You don't want everybody creating um, their own choice list for project names. Um, same thing with things like contractor, vendor, supplier, partners, and, and other things. So I got project names twice, it looks like. Sorry about that. So maybe this project name is for the company, and maybe this project name is for the contractor. So maybe there's a relationship between supplier and contract name versus inter um, supplier and project name versus enterprise project names. Okay, so I'll just I'll just leverage my mistake to give you another business scenario. Okay, but imagine if you have these lists lists defined, did you change it once? And it changes in every single app you ever made that uses it without you actually having to open the canvas. So if a new project gets added, you don't have to go open up all your apps or um, open up every single SharePoint list to add these uh, this new project to the list, right? So how, how do you get your drop downs to show the new project name, if every single list is a choice list that you manually made when you made that list, now you have to go to every list to add that project name. And that just sounds like horror story to me. And I can think of all other scenarios where you wouldn't want to do that. So in an ideal world, so you realize that, you know, I've told you this before that my background is in SharePoint before Power Apps. And so what we used to do in an ideal world is we would use the content type hub to create site columns and, and content types with content type columns that we could use across our entire enterprise. Um, and those of you that are partners in ISVs, you've, you've done this before. Um, I'm not going to talk about it today because it requires education on what the content type hub is and all the ifs and thens and thereafters you need to know to use it. So I'm not going to talk about it, but those of you who know it, you instantly got what I'm talking about. Then there's the Enterprise Term Store, which is basically my favorite place to use for um, managing uh, repetitive uh, taxonomies, whether they be, um, you know, for for uh, the tenant or for the site collection. Remember that when you're dealing with your Enterprise Term Store, you have a, a term store for the enterprise you know, that the, to the admin, the SharePoint admin can set. But then in each SharePoint site, um, you can also put in terms below the line that apply to the site collection. So again, I'm not going to talk about that because there's a lot there to get to know. 
But let's suppose you're a regular person, you're not a tenant admin, you're not an IT consultant, you're not a partner of record, so you don't have access to these sophisticated mechanisms for sharing um, content across an enterprise. Well, there's things you can do as well, and that's what I'm going to show you today. For those of you that don't have this level of access up here, we're going to use a global configuration site that we're going to make ourselves, and then I'm going to show you how easy this can be so that you don't spend so much time one-offing uh, repetitive lists. Okay, you can also, of course, use a dedicated data source, which is these two bullets are basically the same thing. The only nuance why they're out, outlined separately is because a global configuration site is a SharePoint site collection specifically, whereas you could also use a dedicated data source from any data uh, location, such as CDS. You could put your um, enterprise content in CDS and then use those for your drop downs and stuff on SharePoint. Okay, so because Power Apps is so awesome and allows you to add multiple data sources, you can always uh, do that. All right, so before I start showing you how to do this, just remember that once you do this, when you use this configuration in your apps, you only need to go to one place to change your drop down choices or your combo box choices. And then when you make that change in that one place, all of your apps drop downs will automatically update. You don't have to go do it everywhere. Okay. Now in preparation, what I have done is I've built my global configuration site and I'm kind of making that sound fancy, but let's go look at it. All right. It's not fancy, all right? I just created a site in SharePoint and I called it Parameters. This happens to be in French, so don't correct my spelling. And this site, what's very important to remember about this, what I'm calling the global configuration site, and that's all Audrey, that's not a Microsoft term in any way. I'm calling it a global configuration site because I'm going to let everybody in my company have read access to this site. So when I go into site permissions, I'm going to go into the advanced permissions, and then I'm going to go into the visitors permissions, and I'm going to add everybody in my company. Um, I only want them to read this data. Um, I don't want them to edit it, of course. So I can just give everyone in my company, when you all have this every one thing in your Active Directory, Choose everyone in your company name, and then um, uncheck this because you don't want to. You don't want to remember to uncheck this. Um, and now everybody in the company now has read access to this site called Parameters. Um, I put nobody in the member list, and whoever I want to administer the list themselves that are on this site. Um, I go ahead and give them administrator rights. And so only the people who you want to revise these should have admin rights. Now, good news is you could use Flow to update, update these from any um, intake form that you create, whether you create that intake form from um, Microsoft Forms, or you create it in custom forms in Power Apps, or you create it as an app form in Power Apps. No matter how you create your intake form, go ahead and use Flow to uh, receive that information, and it can add it to these lists for you. So let's say there's a uh, a form you create called a, hey, when we add a new region to our company, you go fill out this form. So somebody goes and fills out that form. It goes through an approval process. Somebody says, yeah, we, 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 we've signed in that region. We're, we're compliant for that region. And then Flo goes and looks at that approval and says, yay, and adds that new region to your list, right? So I think I skipped saying that after I made the global site collection and permissioned it, then I added to it all the list I wanted to reuse, right? So like here's a list called regions, and I put all the regions in there. Again, those of you that are uh, SharePoint savvy, 
you realize that we would use term store or content type hub but again this video is for people who don't have access to above the line terms don't have access to the content type hub but still want to have a global scenario for choices right keep going so now that i've made this list and i've put all my regions in there now i'm going to go and look at my apps okay so i have an app uh, already made let's look at that app um, well actually let's open that app in run time you know we'll just run the app so I'll get out of and in this app the project list it includes the region column right so if I click this um, and then I open up the app and this is designed for the phone so that people have a quick access to all the open projects that are available. It's kind of an information management app, but certain people have rights to the edit form page. And so if I go here and I click this, what we see, I'm going to go ahead and edit the region here. What we see in the drop down here is um, the list that's coming from that parameter site. So the list of regions here is coming from the parameter site, whereas this particular app is actually on an entirely different site, okay? So I'm gonna accept that, I'm gonna go back, and now you can see I've changed that to Central America, okay? So I'm gonna make another app, and I'm gonna use that region column, so that, that region list in the parameter site, so you can see how this works, and then together, we'll see how this um, replicates across different apps, okay? So I have nothing else to do in parameters. Um, I think the last thing I would do is on my IT website or on my uh, Yammer group for Power Apps, I might go ahead and publish a post for my internal users that says, hey, um, I've published these uh, reoccurring lists for you in case you want to use them while you're building your apps okay so it's something that you could share with other app makers as well and create a repository of reusable um, column choices that your company can leverage or all the app makers in the company can leverage Co common users of the apps don't need to know about it but your app makers might want to know about it okay so now i'm going to go um, back to uh, SharePoint and I'm going to go to a site called um, and, and you can see that in the project list the last thing I did was add a region column so now I'm going to go to a different uh, list in SharePoint uh, let's see what can I go to how about this expense list okay there's a little expense list here I'm just going to add the region column so I'm going to go in here into my list settings I'm going to create a column and I'm going to add region and notice I'm using single line of text now if you wanted to use two words I suggest to you that you don't put a space the first time you enter um, the column this keeps your internal names clean those of you that don't know what I'm talking about you don't have to worry about it it's not a requirement ignore me um, I actually go back in and add the space because the first name you give a column is the last name it has from a SharePoint perspective in the back end. So I like to keep that very clean so I don't put spaces. Um, but if you don't understand what I just said, go ahead and put the space and life is fine, right? Those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that I have the expense region there, you're probably wondering, well, I want them to use the SharePoint list to edit the region. And Audrey, because you made it a, a single line of text, they won't be able to do that, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize the form. So I'm going to edit, and then I'm going to do customize. I could have chosen customize form as well. It looks like I might have already customized the form. I didn't look at it hard enough. It didn't look like the standard SharePoint form, but this is not a problem at all. And here's the beauty of Power Apps. Um, even with customized forms, 
you can add additional data sources. And that's what we're going to need to do here. We're going to have to add the data source for the parameters, right? So I'm just going to go up here and copy the uh, SharePoint uh, URL and then go back to my app. Where did I go? There it goes. And it's loading. Give it a second. And here is my custom form. And I did do something. You can tell because there's a button. There's never a button. But not a problem. We're just going to keep customizing this form then. Um, hopefully, I'm not messing up one of my other demos. But if, if so, that's okay. I'm just going to delete this button because I don't want it. And then I'm going to remove a few things from here. So I'm going to remove uh, the data cards for the approval, the status. And then I'm going to go into my form and choose the expense, I mean, the, the expense region. All right. Now, here is the real tip, tip, tip here. When you add this expense region, click on the ABC and choose allowed values. Okay, that's all you have to do for that. And now you have a drop down there. Now, I might move it up uh, to where I want it to be in my form, um, but I just wanted to make it a drop down. And then now that it's a drop down, I will have to unlock this field to reset the items property. Now, I need to add the data source first, so I'm going to go ahead and add my parameters as a data source. Remember that we gave the parameter, the global configuration site that I'm calling it, we gave everybody at the company read rights to it. So that's really important. If you don't do that, then you might have a problem with them even, you know, getting anywhere in this app. So just remember to give them read rights to your global configuration site. I'm going to go down here and pick SharePoint. Sorry, I have a whole bunch of custom connectors here. And I'm going to choose the regions. Okay. Now that I have it here, I'm going to use it for that drop down. So I'm just going to select that um, control again and change the drop down to regions. I'm also going to include the title, which because I want it to return back in that drop down the title property. Now, FYI, I have noticed some latency here with this showing up. So, and I find that it resolves itself if I just save and publish. Same case with apps as well as with um, forms, okay? Just save and publish first. It will pick up on that uh, lookup and life will be fine, okay? So now when people go and edit this, let's just do an edit of, of these two to give them a region. We'll just give them the region. You see that works fine. I'm going to save. Not a problem. So now this is North America. I'm going to close that and open up my next one. And this is uh, the training meeting expenses. I'm going to change this to EMEA and save. So now I've actually enabled people to use that drop down even in forms. Now I could also create a power app from here. And let, I mean, I could make an app in Power Apps from here in the same way, and I would take the same exact steps, right? But if I was intending to make a mobile app, I would want to remember after making my app or before making my app to also customize the form at a minimum just so that that drop down is shown up. Issues. Let's go to a completely different site. Let's go to Audrey's demos, and I believe that I have some interesting uh, things going on here. We got some call logs. Uh, we might be able to do this one. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and add a column for the region. Okay, so these are call logs. Somebody called somebody, right? So I'm just going to call this uh, contact region. 
And this is going to be the region of the person that was called. That's all, all right? And now we're going to make an app, uh, a mobile app for the call log. This actually, FYI, I can give this um, class to you or, or this uh, video to you another day. This call log is automated. Um, it's, it's not actually being done by anybody. It's being done by flow. Every time somebody presses the call somebody button in Power Apps. And so that's what the purpose of that is. I'm going to go ahead and create an app and call this call log sample. Hit create. Now it's going to go through and it's going to create my three screen app, right? So, and I'm very happy with that. So you don't have to stop using all your fun automations that occur in Power Apps that save you a lot of time. Go ahead and build your three screen app and then 80% of your work will be done. All you have to do now is brand it and make it look the way you want. So it's very often I'll start with a auto generated app. Okay, so we'll give this a minute and I'll fast forward so we can go straight into what we're gonna do in the app, which you probably already know. Okay, my call log app is finished. So it looks great. I think I'm gonna replace the names with the region. So I'm just gonna click into my gallery go into my template and change the customer to the region, all right? Now what's nice about this is the region that I have put in this column is text, which means I can filter by it, I can do all these things that will be delegatable too, right? Another advantage. Okay, so now I'm going to um, leave everything else alone. I might just change my theme so that, you know, it's more fun, I don't know. So now I have my call log. Let's do a couple of more things. Let's make a card look. I know, you know, I love that. So I'll go to template padding and make my padding like 25 because we don't have a lot to say in these cards. I'll make my template fill white. Um, and there I have these little cards. Okay, so let's go to the edit page, right? So here's our detail page. Now I'm going to go to my edit page, all right? Now I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to say, first of all, we never have attachments with call logs, so I'm going to remove that. Then I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to move the region up to the top of my, um, of my drop downs and stuff. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is change the contact reason to a drop down. And all I do is click ABC and say allowed values. Just remember that. That is the easiest thing in the world to me to change a field to a drop down. Just change it to allowed values. And then I'm going to unlock the card. Uh, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to put that space in region. If I had done it in SharePoint before I left, I wouldn't have to do it here. But since I'm unlocking the card, I can go ahead and do that here. You know, I can say what I can call this whatever I want. I can just say region if I want to. Um, okay. And what I'm going to do first is add the region data source. So I'm going to add my data source because I need to continuously um, add this uh, region. I mean, this global configuration site list, and so I need to get that site. Again, I have made sure, uh, okay, I'm going to look for my SharePoint connection here. Wrong one. Sorry, go back. I'm going to look from the right SharePoint connection. We'll talk about that another day. Why do I have multiple SharePoint connections, you're probably wondering. Okay, so I'm going to choose my SharePoint connection, and then I'm going to paste my global configuration site in there, and I'm going to choose my regions, okay? Now that I have my regions, now I can do the same thing we did with the customized form, which is change the item property to regions.title. There can't be anything easier than this, right? Then I'm going to go ahead and save my app. Uh, and publish it. Okay, now 
here's where I want to illustrate why did I take this path, right? So for those of you that still may be confused or not knowing what she's doing and why, I'm going to close that app. So now our app is closed. Our form is closed. Okay. And it's another day. Let's go fast forward. Let's fast forward. Um, I don't know, six weeks. Somebody decides, hey, we just won. Um, I don't think there's anything missing here. Um, we're gonna we just won. What region can you think of here? Let's let's add a bunch of islands that have their own story. So I'll just add islands um, because that's not important right now. What the name of the region is. So now I've added islands to my regions list in one place. Okay. So let's go to the call log. Let's go to first to our form. So we had a form. And where was our form? Our form, if I remember correctly, was on my planning site. So if I go to my planning team site and I go to my expense uh, list, we had added the region, expense region. Now I'm going to edit this and I'm going to correctly click on edit. My form will pop up. And notice um, once we open the form, it will show us the customizations we've already made. I'm going to drop this down. Notice we now have the islands. Automatically have the islands, okay? If I go to Power Apps here and I go to my apps that we created, like we created a uh, project list. Let's look at our project list. And then in the project list, if I want to add Asia, I mean, the islands for project D, if I edit that, you'll notice that I now have the islands there, okay? Um, if I go back to my apps and I open up the call log sample that we made, and I'm sure by now you trust me, the dropdown will be updated to include islands. So understand that what I'm talking about here is a way of scaling um, columns that re relate to choices. Now, I want to talk to you about a lot of scaling options. Um, over time, I'll be talking to you about scaling options. Um, I think what I forgot to do on my drop downs that you want to make sure you do is make sure that the default is still set to parent um, the default should be set to parent uh, default, right? And I think you guys caught that. Um, but I'm just going to choose islands and set it as islands and off we go. Okay. So remember that this is a way to scale. And I'll be talking to you about different ways to scale in your apps so that um, you can, you can, be a little bit smart about how you're doing your SharePoint implementations. Cause I know a lot of you are doing a lot of SharePoint apps. I want you to be able to scale those apps out. Um, those of you that are using CDS that have P1 or P2 licenses, don't hesitate to also use CDS for a global location. Um, because you'll just have to make sure that they can connect to it. All right. So in this case, I use the global configuration SharePoint site just because I could permission it to everybody in my company in one step. Um, but most definitely those of you that are using CDS for enterprise could do something similar. It's a little bit different to as far as the security, you know, making sure that people can read the CDS entity. All right. So look forward to me talking about this a little bit more because I want to help you spend less time doing things over and over and over and over again in SharePoint. So I'll be um, doing that. I actually might create a playlist called um, apps for SharePoint enterprise. Okay. It sounds long. So if I figure out a short um, playlist name, this is where they'll go. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you at the next, um, Friday functions video.